Most of the stuff that you'll see on this channel I've bought from eBay. A very addictive platform. I would spend some time every evening looking through the computers and consoles categories for items listed as vintage, spurs repairs, not working, faulty and untested. It's that last one, untested. Under that you'll sometimes find lots of bundled together components such as graphics cards, motherboards, memory, things like that. Now these listings always seem very tempting but there is that risk that well are these items genuinely untested and how much of it actually would work. Well temptation has finally got the better of me and 34 pounds later I have this big box of parts to go through. So let's see what we have and let's see how much of this, if any, works. So let's see what we have. Now I've already been through this and removed all the packaging just to make this a little bit easier. But it is quite the assortment of parts. First rather uninteresting thing, ATX power supply, Delta Electronics, 250 watts maximum output, not an awful lot of power connectors on this, not a particularly good uh, power supply, but I suppose it would do for a test bed, something like that. One equally uninteresting PCI modem, We'll just throw that to the side. PCI network card, presumably 100 megabit. Realtek controller on it, no branding as such other than that. Graphics cards, and it's nice that most of the stuff was shipped in these anti-static bags. At least that tells us that the seller here has taken some care of these components. So the first one is a Trident ISA card. This one then is an ATI Raiden RV100. What is the RV100? AGP card. I don't think it's anything special. In fact, I'm fairly sure the RV100 is a take on the Radeon 7000, which certainly is not a great chipset, especially if it only has a 64 bit memory bus. Some loose stuff in there. So we've got a Nvidia card here that looks like it's been in a war. These capacitors look like they have exploded, but uh, there's three missing here. And speak of the devil, spur capacitors. That makes me wonder actually. So the person selling this lot has went to the trouble to buy replacement capacitors for this card. In fact, it looks like, oh, it looks like they've had a go at fitting one rather um, poorly to say the least. They've tried to replace that one and obviously given up. In fact, how did they even get these other ones off? Because they haven't been desoldered. Have they just literally pulled them off? Well, that gives us something to do anyway, doesn't it? We can fix this here, fix the soldering on this, and replace the rest of these caps. And then we can test this card. This is PCIe. It's a GeForce 8400GS. 256 megabyte DDR2. Well, I know what this one is because I have the PCI variant of this. This is a GeForce 6200 DDR2, 256 megabyte AGP. I think this is the last generation of the card to be supported by Windows 98, but with the 256 megabytes on it. I mean, you wouldn't even put 256 meg of RAM in a Windows 98 system. So 
I would, I personally would be hard pushed to put this card into a Windows 98 build. But certainly for a, you know early 2000s build, I think this card would do pretty well. Next up, we have a nice PCI card. This is an ATI Rage 128. Quite a nice card. I'm actually really hoping that this one works because uh, it gives me an idea for a future video. And then this one here really is the star of the show. Um, was the one card, if I'm being perfectly honest, that caught my eye in the listing. A 3D Blaster Banshee. This is a 3D FX Voodoo Banshee. Based on the Voodoo 2, just with a single processor unit. But this is also a combined 2D, 3D card. 16 megabytes of RAM on board. And if this card works, this in itself will be worth the money that we spent to get the full box. So, other expansion cards then. This is quite an interesting Wii card. I actually had one of these back in the day. So this is a Sigma Designs Real Magic. And effectively all this is, is a MPEG-2 DVD decoder card. So we get audio output, digital audio, TV out, VGA, and VGA in. Now unfortunately I don't have the breakout cable to get us the VGA in. At the very least I'll be able to get TV out of this here to be able to test it. There is a couple of sound cards in here as well, albeit they're nothing particularly special. This is a Genius Sound Maker Value 4.1, very obviously a Sound Blaster Live clone, even though this only is 4.1 rather than 5.1. I think there was a 5.1 version of this card available. Not expecting anything special out of this, but I suppose that's another sound card. And then we do have a creative card. This is a model number CT4740. And I believe this is a Sound Blaster 16. Or, well, it was certainly sold as a Sound Blaster 16. But there is no OPL chip on here. This card actually uses a chipset from another manufacturer that Creative bought. And the name of that manufacturer just escapes me right now. But it is essentially an emulated Sound Blaster 16. Well, recreated in this package here. Not a particularly special card, but it would certainly do for a little Windows 98 build. Something like that. Memory. So a couple of 72 pin 16 meg sticks, matching part. And this little 32 pin stick. I would hazard a guess that this is only 256k. And here then we have an awful lot of RAM that initially confused me because I never had any of this back in the day. This is RAM bus. So these four sticks here are 256 megabytes each. So there is one gig of RAM bus. And then we have a further two sticks here that are still sealed, brand new. And these are just 128 meg each. A selection of random coolers. This rather odd looking uh, module here, this is obviously designed to sit in a five and a quarter inch bay. And it has quite the variety of uh, connectors on it. So we've all seen that before, your typical uh, flash memory adapters. And we've got USB firewire, not sure what that is. But there's also video in here that's labeled as composite and S video. And a load of audio jacks. So there's no cards or anything included in this lot that this seems suitable for. I'm not really sure what sort of system that would have came out of. And to be honest with you, I'm not really sure I'd ever do anything with it, but it's there anyway. 
processors. And the first one here is an Intel Pentium MMX 166 megahertz. Then we've got this chip here that has a cooler attached to it and the label has just fell off. And that label has written on it Pentium 75. So presumably an Intel Pentium 75 coming at this cooler off. There we are. One Intel Pentium 75 megahertz. Slot one processor, Pentium 3. Five hundred and thirty three megahertz. I do have a slot one motherboard with a Pentium two in it at the minute. Thing is I'm not sure if that will motherboard will run at the 133 megahertz front side bus that this chip is looking for. I'll see if I can look up if this chip is compatible with the motherboard I have before we try and test it. Certainly wouldn't want to kill it if it uh, does in fact work. And then last but not least we have a 46DX266, it's ST, essentially a rebranded Sarex chip. That's interesting isn't it? The colour variation on the base of those pins. Is that corrosion on that? It looks like it might be. Not sure. Maybe try and clean that up a wee bit with the IPA and toothbrush just to see. But if this chip does work, it would certainly be interesting to try it against our 46 build, which has a Sarex chip in it, also a DX266. You'd expect the performance to be uh, fairly similar. And then we're in the motherboards. And here we have one nice little Socket 7 motherboard. Complete with manual. It actually reminds me of the Socket 7 motherboard that we tried to and failed repairing at the start of the year. It certainly seems to use the same Intel PCI chipset. And there is a processor on board. Another processor. And this one is an AMD K6, 233 megahertz. That could be a really nice processor, you know, for our Socket 7 build system. In fact, this might even be a better motherboard for that system, if in fact this uh, motherboard works. One very purple looking motherboard with uh, some rather nasty looking capacitors on it. And another processor, an AMD Sempron. Oh dear, I think I'd probably want to swap that out for an Athlon 64 or something of the sort. This is a socket 462 board. Not sure of the manufacturer, but the board is model V500DAP. I really do like the purple, but I'd probably be wanting to replace those capacitors before trying to power this board. None of the rest of them seem to have leaked. Funny we were just talking about CPUs with the dyes exposed on them over on Discord earlier today. Not something you really see anymore. And putting the coolers on this type of socket was always a nightmare, wasn't it? In fact, that's probably a cooler there for this socket, you know. And the way, the only way you could really get these on 
was to put on one side and then lever the other side down with a flat blade screwdriver, hoping it didn't slip and go straight through your motherboard. More manuals and that might actually be the CD for that motherboard. Certainly says for Intel and via chipset. That's a via chipset. And then last but certainly not least, one box containing a nice little 386SX motherboard, including the 387 coprocessor. That's quite nice to have. Ami BIOS UMC chipset and unfortunately one rather leaky battery. So we'll get that cut off and try to treat any corrosion that it might have caused. And I can see potentially a bit of damage to one trace here. Doesn't appear to be any corrosion on the underside of the board. So hopefully it's just superficial. So that is quite the collection of parts that we have to test here. I think I'll start with the motherboards, albeit if I don't have capacitors for these, I would prefer not to try and power this board up. But I'll have a look and if we have them, we'll certainly swap them out. Let's start with the oldest one though, and the one that definitely needs attention. We have to get that battery out of there. Let's take a look at this 386 motherboard and see if it'll post. Snip, snip, battery, be gone. Varta, well known for destroying many a board, but it's not exactly their fault, is it? These things were never meant to last for the 30, 40 years that that has been installed. So aside from the obvious area of damage down in here, I've also noticed that the corrosion has spread quite a bit. There's some corrosion here. It's down here, there's a bit of uh, a mark on the board beside that chip and a couple of legs of that are green. A bit of green in these ISA slots and it even makes its way as far as this on the board. There's a bit of green on the leg of that resistor. So first of all, I'm going to just scrape off any of the loose corrosion that is there. Then we'll treat it with the white vinegar and IPA. You've seen me do this plenty of times before, so I'm not going to record any great amount of detail. This is only the first board we're looking at, and we're already, what, 19 minutes into this video? I'm just going to remove this chip here because some of the legs of it are uh, green as well. I suspect this is probably the keyboard controller. In fact, that socket needs to be replaced. One of the legs has broke off on one of the pins there. Corrosion is quite a bit more extensive on this board than I had hoped. But I do have a suitable replacement socket, so we may as well just swap it out. New socket fitted in here and keyboard controller back in place. Had to clean up the pins on the controller here, but hopefully it works okay. I wound up just removing this chip as well and fit a new socket there. There was quite a bit of green on these pins as well, so I thought it just easier to remove that for cleaning up. So let's test it. Two one megabyte sticks out of my own collection. Checking the manual for this. Those are the biggest. Uh, sticks that this board supports. We can put up to 4 meg in here and there's also support for up to 4 megabyte of DRAM chips in here. And I think we'll just be cheeky and try out the Trident VGA ISA card that came as part of the lot as well. Okay here we go. Monitor on. Well, we're getting the picture. There's the Trident BIOS. Yep, certainly seems to be working. 
count it up, it's two megabytes of memory, more or less. And it's reporting CMOS battery low, which is not surprising considering there's no battery installed anymore. American Megatrends BIOS. I wouldn't get too worried about this, this sort of vertical banding here, if you can even make that out in the camera. Um, that's probably just this LCD monitor. And look at that, year. 1901, 1902, up to 2099. So this board must be Y2K compliant. I would certainly call that a success. I think we can say that this 386SX motherboard, along with the Trident ISA graphics card, these both work. So next up, I think we'll try the Socket 7 board. This has the AMD K6 processor installed. And I was going to try it with the ATI Rage 2 card. That's actually AGP. I said it was PCI earlier. So not just quite as good a card as I had hoped. I really want an early ATI PCI card. Oh well. We do have one PCI card from the lot though, this, the 3D Blaster Banshee, so we'll try it with that. And we may as well also try it with the 16 meg of RAM that we got. Okay, here we go. Fan on the CPU coolers, obviously away. It's trying to turn. But we're getting absolutely no picture not even a signal on the monitor. Mm, something's wrong. Let's try the ISA test card. Well, you can use it on the PCI as well, but let's just try it in the ISA bus. And we'll hook it up to the speaker, just in case the computer's trying to tell us something. It's only registering the 12 volt. And no activity. No beeps, no nothing. Is this possibly another dead socket 7 motherboard? Maybe we should just try that in there. That looks a bit better, doesn't it? Still no activity. I wonder are the jumpers set up properly on this motherboard for that processor? I just assumed it would be since the chip was in the socket when it came, but I do have the manual. Let me check that. So the voltage wasn't set right, it was only set to 2.8, whereas this chip is looking 3.3. But this motherboard might not even support that AMD chip, because that's a 233, so that's a frontside bus of 66 megahertz and a multiplier of 3.5, and the maximum multiplier you can have on this board is three. Now, correcting the voltage, and changing the multiplier to three, which is the maximum we can get here. Doesn't make any difference. And the CPU stays stone cold. Not heating up at all. And you would expect it without the cooler on. To start to get hot fairly quickly. So possibly another dead motherboard. But just before we do call it that, I thought we'd try the Pentium 75 chip because it is definitely supported by this board. Right, let's test it. That looks a lot more promising, doesn't it? 
getting some activity on the bus, but we're not getting a picture. Another dead uh, CPU fan. Really didn't want this card to be dead. Let's try it with that Trident card, see if it comes on. And away it goes. So the board's okay. Possibly one dead AMD CPU. And possibly one dead 3D Blaster Banshee. I really hope this works. I will try it in another board. Right, happy enough to call it that the board works and that memory works. I'm going to crack out another motherboard so that we can test this. But I also want to test this chip again. So I have this Spur Socket 7 motherboard. It's already got RAM in it and Sarix 6X86MX. Performance rating 200 chip. It's actually just 150 megahertz chip though. Needs a cooler, so I suppose we should try it with one of the coolers that came in the lot. See if the fan turns on this one. And first thing I want to do is try out the Blaster Banshee. Please work. Come on. Here we go. Good fan on that cooler. But unfortunately, no video signal. What about this other processor then? Which this board should definitely support. Right, let's see what's going to happen. Yep, where it goes. Well, at least we know that processor is good. It's just not supported by that other motherboard. While this board is out then, let's try the other Socket 7 chip that we got, the Pentium MMX166. Okay, that's everything set. Let's try one of our other coolers that we've got. I'll just set it there, it'll be all right for a minute. Cooler Master, so you would like to think this fan will still be good. Let's go. Yep, it's come to life. Pentium MMX CPU at 166 megahertz. That's fine. Just before we do test those other cards, since we've been going through CPUs, I thought what we'd do quickly is break out the 46 rig so we can try that other DX266 chip. But first of all, I thought we'd do a quick benchmark of the system as it is with the IBM Blue Lightning chip and then we can compare it against this one. So the processor benchmark is 26.92. So the board comes to life with a new CPU in it. Chip's obviously working. Let's just quickly benchmark it and see how it compares to the other one. Processor benchmark then is 28.34. So despite these two chips being essentially the same, I mean they are both variants on the Sarix 486, and SysSpeed here sees them both as a Sarix DX2. The chip branded ST is slightly faster than the chip branded IBM Blue Lightning. So we still have quite a few more cards to test here. But to save this video getting any longer, what I'll do is go away and test all them myself. And then we'll come back to take a review of what works and what doesn't. Well, I've worked my way through all those other expansion cards and they all work. The sound cards work, the MPEG-2 decoder, that's fine, and the other graphics cards. In fact, out of all of it, there's only 
two cards that aren't working. That's our NVIDIA 8400GS. I did quickly have a look at replacing the capacitors here with the ones that were included. Uh, there was none included for this, but putting that aside, whoever removed these capacitors by pulling them off, yes, pulling through hole capacitors off, has managed to destroy traces on the back of the board. And while it probably could be repaired, I just don't know if it's worth it. Because, well, it's not a particularly special card. Yeah, it would probably do for a little XP system. But there certainly are better options out there. So for now, I just don't want to waste any more time on it. And then the other card that definitely doesn't work is unfortunately the 3D Blaster Banshee, the Voodoo card. I really was hoping, out of all of it, that this was going to work. Just the way it goes. Now, when I say it doesn't work, if you put this into your computer, the machine still does seem to post in the background. As, you know, you can hear it complete its you know, BIOS post and then it will start to load Windows. But there's just no display out of this card. So it could be just something really simple that's wrong with this. Maybe it's not generating a sync, something like that. Maybe just one of these components down here has failed. So definitely will come back to this at some point. Not going to throw this away because, you know, if we can get this working, this is quite a valuable card. So then this pile here, and this is stuff that I haven't really been able to test today. The RAM bus memory, don't have a RAM bus motherboard, so definitely couldn't be testing that. The Pentium 3 processor, while I did try it in my slot 1 board that I have, that is a Pentium 2 board and it only has a 100 megahertz front side bus. So with this chip in there, it didn't post. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this chip is bad. Could just be it's not supported by that other motherboard. And then our purple Jetway Socket A motherboard. Wasn't able to test this today because of the damage to the capacitors here where these have been leaking. Just didn't want to run the risk of powering this board up and potentially damaging something just with these bad capacitors. Yes, it probably would have worked, but I would rather get those replaced and then know that it's right and safe to power it on. But putting aside what we have here and the pretty useless ATX power supply and that other weird front panel thing that came with the lot, all of this stuff certainly works. So we got a good 386 motherboard, socket seven motherboard, and pile of video cards, sound cards, and that MPEG decoder card. Don't forget a few heat sinks as well. And for £34, yes, it might have been a bit of a gamble buying it all untested, but this time it seems to have worked out fine. Now, that doesn't mean everybody needs to jump on eBay and start buying untested lots of computer hardware because honestly, I think I just got lucky here with how much of this works. If you are going to be buying stuff like that, I think you always have to assume worst case that it won't work and whatever money you are spending on it, just be comfortable taking that gamble. Well, that's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Yes, it was a bit longer than what I usually try to put out, but I just wanted to cover some of the boards and cards and bits and pieces in some detail. So if you did enjoy this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up as it does really help the channel. Why not hit subscribe if you haven't done so already? Still plenty more yet to come here on CRG and I'll see you next time.